have to say thanks. Oh, what shall I say unto my maker? All I have to say thanks. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is celebrate our God. We will celebrate our God. And if I not be rich, and if we will celebrate our God. And if I not be rich, and if we will celebrate Oh, 
Mamma <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Na kwani na ye shira o ni a yehuwa shira no shira no ni a yehuwa shira no shira no oni pa tu mi sa ni a yehuwa shira no na kwani na ye shira. Oni pa tu mi sa ni a yehuwa shira no na kwani na ye shira o ni a yehuwa shira no shira no ni a yehuwa shira no shira no oni pa tu mi sa ni a yehuwa shira no. Oh, 
We are here this evening only by the grace and privilege that you have granted unto us. A no man could take these written words and read them out, but it takes you to break bread for your children. It takes you to convict the heart of your children. It takes you to glorify and magnify your name. Father, even as we stand here, we are nothing before you. We don't indeed deserve to take a hold of your word, knowing that we, like Jonah, are always running away from your presence. But Lord, we know that all things work together for good to them that love you. 
And we know that you can even take not and make a good out of it. We pray, Lord, with our hearts lifted up to you this evening. Even as we are about to read a portion of your word and cry unto you, Lord. It's our prayer that you speak unto our hearts. Amen. However you please. Taking us out of the equation and honoring yourself. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. We pray for grace. We pray for healings. And we pray for breakthrough. Amen. But of all, we pray for a more anointing of the Holy Spirit upon our life. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let the saints say, Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all. Oh, God bless you all. God amen. bless and privilege to be in the house of God this amen. evening. Let's quickly turn our text to Matthew 7, 24. We want to speak a little on the coming storm. Amen. Amen. Therefore, whosoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth this saying of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sun. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and fell, and great was the fall of it. Amen. 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 May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of the word. We can equally open to Mark chapter 4. And read the story there. Mark chapter 4. Verse 22. And he said, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Please, 28, sir. Oh. Verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had when they had sent away the multitude, he took they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the winds, waves beat into the ship, and so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carry thou not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? 
and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. What manner of man is this? When cried, that even the wind and the sea obey him. Ah, and, and it amazes me. If you notice, you realize that most of the life of Jesus Christ was lived along the seashore. Amen. Most of his conversion was also along the seashore. And most of his powerful sermons were on the sea. So much so that the prophet preached a message and he titled it The Testimony on the Sea. Hallelujah. So in this text, we realize that Jesus was on the sea as usual. Don't forget he was the one who asked them to come. Let us pass on and go on to the other side. And when they went into, onto the ship, he left them to tax. And he chose to go and rest. Then all of a sudden, the storm came up against them. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's keep this in notes that there are three types of storms in our life. The storms that we cause in our life by ourselves. Then, then we have the storms that people inflict on us in our life. And we have the final one, the storm that is God ordained in your life. But be rest assured that a child of God is never overtaken by events. And that all things work together for good. Amen. To them that love the Lord. So Jesus might be sleeping in your boat at the moment. Fear not. He knows why he is sleeping. Because he is not bothered by the storm. Amen. You might not have experienced a storm before. So you go fetching water out. You go sleeping. You go crying. You don't know what to do. But so far as there's a master on the ship, and so far as you know you can call Jesus on the sea, the storms in your life are inconsequential. Hallelujah. Amen. So Psalm 107 says, let the redeemer of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the land of the fool. This is talking about storms that is inflicted by yourself and by people. He said, Some sat in darkness. In utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains. Verse because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. God has an ordinance in our life. Yes, yes, correct. And he has set his laws in order. And he told you, if you do this, this is what will happen to you. But we chose to go after our own last. And instead of holding God to his word, we follow after our last. And like our brother Samson, who is a typical example of the bride in this age, we end up having our eyes plucked out. Our eyesight plucked out. And we end up in a condition that we cannot help ourselves in. Then at the end of the day, once you have allowed yourself to fall into that situation, then you have your enemies, those who are waiting to say, where is your God? Then they also come and inflict their portion of the storm in your life. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But our God is a loving Father. Our God is a gracious God. And he loves his children no matter what. 
Why did you put the strength of Samson in his hands? Why did he put the strength in his stomach? Why did he put the strength in his leg? Because our God is an omniscient God. He knows the end from the future. And he knows this, my child. No matter how I try to discipline him. No matter how I teach him the word. No matter how his spirit instructs him. He will want to go and taste and see. And when he goes to taste, he's going to have the repercussion. But I have a father. He knows my name. And when I call up for him, he will answer me. So he chose to put the strength of something in something that has the ability to reach and erase. So that no matter how hard he was shaved, no matter how powerless he became, so far as the hair grew, oh, scripture says, how be it the hair of Samson grew, so far as he was pushing and treading, so far as he was working hard, and he was crying, Lord, remember me, once more, the head was growing, and that day he stepped into the full grace, no matter how far he had gone, the Lord came down. And Amen. that is the kind of God we have. No matter how bad we go into a circumstance, He has given us something that we can renew every day. You can do it lying down. You can do it standing up. You can do it with your eyes closed. You can do it in your chambers. You can do it on the streets. No matter where you are. Just see yourself in a difficult situation. Get before the mercy seat. I say, I have a God. And he knows me by name. And when I call him, he will surely answer. Amen. Amen. He is the God who calms the storms. Amen. 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 Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. Hallelujah. Amen. That's verse 17. They loved all food and drew near the gates of death. Amen. Amen. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This brings to mind the story of David. Where did David the, the man became a pathological liar. He had to lie to cover a lie. And he became a murderer. And he became an adulterer. He went to the highest pinnacle of sin. Just because of good living. And out of his own lust, he started devising evil. That is what comfort can do to you sometimes. You get to a place you think, oh, where I am, I am untouchable. I am unstoppable. Sometimes we even forget ourselves and we say, where I've got it to, not even God can bring me down. That is the pride of life. Because you have a little car. You have a little house. You start to earn some salary. So you think the whole world should back on your feet. But David, out of all his riches, God decided to punish him. And God started punishing him. He started killing the root of the sin in his life. But out of that difficult situation, out of that desperation, we have one of the best Psalms David has ever produced. Psalm 51. 
He said, Lord, purge me with high sub so that I'll be clean. Create in me a clean heart and renew that spirit within me. Cut me not as evil. And take not the joy of the Lord away from me. But let your Holy Spirit be on me. That is the cry of a righteous man. No matter how far you go, you know that God, you answer prayer. And when you genuinely repent, that he will come to your aid. And instead of God, Continue to punish him. He says, David, wake up. You have cried enough. You are my son. And I have a covenant with you. I've come to remind you of the covenant. And my covenant is that your throne is going to be everlasting. The wedlock that was created, that was bad. I'm taking that sin away. But I'm going to bless you with another son. And that son, he is going to be after the image of my son. Hallelujah. His kingdom will have peace. And will have no trouble. Is this punishment? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 90 said, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. So we realize that storms in our life they have the power to bring questions to us. So much so that it makes us question whether God really loves us. God, why is it that you allow only me to go through this difficult situation? God, this purpose of yours for my life. Is this really correct? Is this the path you want me to trail? Do you remember when the disciples got into the boat? It wasn't Peter who said, Lord, let's go over to the other side. It was Jesus who said, let's go. And you and I know that Jesus is omniscient. So it means he knows all things. He is able to descend the hearts of people. He's able to tell things in the future. So Jesus knew that when they step on the shore, there was going to be a storm on the sea. But the question is, immediately Jesus entered the ship, knowing that there was a storm coming, he chose to go and sleep. Amen. The Lord Jesus chose to go and sleep. Jesus knew that Lazarus was sick. Jesus knew that Lazarus was going to die. But he says, let us wait four more days. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. My brother, my sister, some of the storms in your life is because God wants you to express his glory first. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why scripture says, can't it all joy? Why you fall into diverse temptations? Why that the trial of your faith? Why patience? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If there was anything that we need assurance on, it is for us to know who we have believed. And that we are persuaded that he is able. Is that we know who knows tomorrow. And that person is the one holding my hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why you can look in the face of trouble and say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. 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 So is there a storm in your life? That is making you question the love of God in your life? 
Don't forget the storm is part of the equation. And my wife is a certain cabra bono quino. You need the storm in your life, my brother. See a tree that is planted. Yeah, where do you are dear? Will remain planted. On your back and will remain stunted. Until a storm comes to push it around. Until the storm comes to losing the ground around it. In as much as there is more storm, that is how deep the roots enter the soil. Then it gives it more granting. Hallelujah. Amen. So you think you are facing storm after storm? You are becoming a better Christian by the day. Amen. Hallelujah. This should give you grace in your heart. And this should give you uh, peace in your heart. That Jesus Yes, Christo. Knowing that there was trouble ahead, how he picked that time for them to cross over. Amen. Why couldn't he let them wait till the following morning? And why? What kind of sleep at all did Jesus enter? That the boat was rocking. That the boat was being filled with water. And disciples were shouting. And Jesus said he is sleeping. What kind of sleep is that? Hallelujah. Hey, I can tell you what sleep that is. It is sleep called blessed assurance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the sleep called Jesus is mine. Amen. So that you can sing and say, No power of man, no guilt of mine, no hearts of hell can block me from his hands. Amen. 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 He takes us through the storm to settle the question of his lordship in our life. Amen. Amen. So he can come back and tell you, fear not. When thou passes through the waters, I will be with you. When thou passes through the fire, it will not burn you. Amen. Amen. These are the only two things that God has used to destroy the world. And he's telling you, if you rest in me, if ever water should come again, that water cannot drown you. If ever the fire should come again, you have a prototype in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that you shall not be burned. But rather, they will see a fourth man in the midst of the fire with you. One liking unto the Son of Man. They are consuming fire in the midst of the fire. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Storms come to encourage fear in our life. As what you No, it comes to stimulate fear in our life. No wonder in verse 40 of Mark chapter 4. As they started gathering the water, they go to a place they realized that. Hey, our experience cannot help. The boat is not helping. And the wind is also not helping. They got afraid to the point of death. Until Jesus came out. And said, peace be still. So this evening, the question is, what do you think that he wanted the, uh, the disciples to learn at that moment? He had taught them that he can cast away devils. He had taught them that he can heal the sick. He had taught them that he can feed them. But at or to that moment, they didn't know he had power over nature. So he had to take them through that situation 
situation. Deliberately fall asleep in the midst of a storm. Allow them to tie themselves out in their experience and knowledge. Until they got to their wit end. Not knowing what they can do on their own. And cry, Master. So until you get to your wit end. Until you get into the deepest of fears. Until you get into your darkest of hours. Believe you me, Jesus will be sleeping. But until you step into the fire. The prophet said he will pluck a palm leaf from the tree of life. And he's going to step in the fire with you. Instead of heat, you are going to have a refreshing. You are going to have a revival in the midst of the fire. So that when you come out, you know that now I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus wanted to tell them that I am your assurance. And I don't only assure you in some things. Brother, I will tell you it is a full package. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Amen. Amen. The fact that Jesus was asleep that Jesus was calm and that Jesus was at peace. No, that he was at peace should have been an indicator to them that there was no reason to fear. You've been with this man. You see the kind of power he wills and the things that he has exercised around. Even to the extent that they want to catch him and he vanishes. And you are in the midst of the storm. And this man you call master is sleeping. And you are tearing yourself up. Why not immediately go and call him? Why wait until you are tired before you call upon him? Is it because you think some problems are too little for the Lord? God is engaged in bigger problems. This one is not anything big. Maybe paracetamol will cure you, so I don't need to worry the Lord Jesus. And you wait until it becomes chronic. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is not weary of your little queries. So then let the fear in you rob you of the rest that the Lord has given you. Because he assures you. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So whatever storm is in your life today, whatever storm is being caused by people in your life today, call on Jesus and he will come to you. And know that the storms come in your life. And they also come to threaten our faith. How many of us realize that? Worshipping the Lord is sweet. Christianity is nice. Talking about the Lord with your brother is wonderful. Coming to church and enjoying the sermon and the worship is glorious. Until a little storm comes in your life. Then your faith vanishes as quickly as the storm came in. How many of us have been in that situation? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But instead of the storm coming to threaten your faith, let it come to strengthen your faith this evening. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, let your song be like just like a tree 
planted by the rivers hey, of waters. Man, I, man, I man, shall man. not be moved. Let your confession be my faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And that in every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Amen. Knowing for a sure that his oath, his covenant, and his blood supports me in the way Amen. of life. These are assurances and these are testimonies of his blood. Amen. Amen. And these are storms that come true in the human chapter. Amen. Say any but there is a third type of storm that is created by God Himself. Hallelujah. Amen. In Second Peter chapter two, verse three, uh, Second Peter three ten, he says, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night." In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned away. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be? In all holy conversation and godliness. Amen. Now, scripture is telling you the earth is going to be burned with fire. Why not with water? Because God destroyed the earth with water. And it repented him. And he promised that he would never do that again. But he destroyed the earth with fire. And with that, he has not promised that he will not do that again. And scripture says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. Amen. So those who are saying, Jesus said he will come, and it's been 2,000 years, and he's not yet in. This is the assurance. Amen. Though the vision will tarry, yet it will surely come to pass. Amen. So the world is fixing now to be destroyed with fire. No wonder man is planning to help God destroy the earth with fire. So we are building atomic missiles of all power. One missile that can wipe the whole country. There is one bottom in the world that the prophet spoke about even before there was any country called Russia. He says one day one foolish man one cranky man is going to press a button and that will be the end of it all. That bottom has a cascading effect. It's able to trigger millions or thousands of missiles all world around. And it is already programmed and directed at every city in the world. Don't be comfortable in your seat. They say Ghana is not part of the problem. So it's only Israel and America that will suffer. Not too long ago, we were warned. Remember, when COVID came, a warning came, be careful, you people, be careful. If not, we will throw only one here. How many remember that? Amen. Amen. So nowhere is saved. The world is preparing for a meltdown. Amen. Amen. And if God is going to melt the world, where else do you think you are going to hide? Now, in Psalm 107, verse 23, 
some went out on the sea in ship. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their apparel, their courage melted away. Amen. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. Amen. 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 Here we realize that when God stirs up trouble, it is only God who can calm the trouble he stirs. When man stirs up trouble, we run to God for help. Now when God stirs up trouble, who are you going to run to? That's why David was wise enough. He said, when you leave me, my enemies, they will destroy me. God, your distraction is hard. But even in your distraction, you will have mercy. So Lord, I give myself to you. You handle with me. How many of us are going to say, that Lord, no matter how hard we try, no matter how deep the bunkers we build, when that your distraction comes, it's going to fail. So Lord, you are the only salvation we have. Oh, the prophet said, before God will ever destroy the world, he first has to send a warning. And before the warning will ever sound, it's that he has already made a preparation and a place of escape. Hallelujah. Just like Noah, as he stood at the door and preaching the gospel of the oncoming storm, the flood was already constructed. Yet they stood there and laughed at him. Just like Moses, as he applied the blood on the door, and he stood there and warned them of the oncoming judgment, they stood there and laughed at him, because the whole town might have been covered with flies. Same way, Luke chapter 17, verse 28, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall he be. No wonder today Jesus is still standing at the door and knocking. And the people are laughing. You take the message across. That God has sent a prophet. And they say you are a heretic. They say you are a fanatic. They don't have anything to do with you. You tell the woman cannot wear trousers. Tell you it is an outdated gospel. It is in the Old Testament. You tell the remain natural. Don't upgrade yourself. God's grace is perfect. He didn't need an upgrade. And they tell you we must look presentable. We must look prettier. And they see our godly sisters. And they are laughing at you. And they say you are Kolo. Rest assured, my sister. You are no Kolo. God's word is the ascent of days. If he is ancient, you are of him. That's why they are laughing at you. But let them continue to laugh. But one day, Noah is going to enter the ark and God will shut the ark. And when the Lord shut the ark, they will come baggy on the door. Open up. And there is nothing you can do about it. Because you didn't shut the door. It is God who shut you. 
But the scripture tells you, my brother, my sister, grieve not the Holy Spirit with which you are sealed until the day of your redemption. There is a sealing going on in the land. Don't play with the gospel you have heard. Because there is a sealing. You don't know when the angel will come around. The prophet calls them investigating angels. You don't know when they will come on your door. Eventually, that very moment, they meet you in sin. So what do you have to do? He says, look up. For your redemption is near. Dream up your love. Clean up the system. Whatever is a limiting factor in your life, take it away. And fall on the Lord. The fire that is coming, there is nothing that can quell it. If it has to take only God to be able to quell it, then there is only one mighty rushing wind and fire that can quell that. Oh, that one with one accord on the day of Pentecost, and the mighty rushing wind came down, and it appeared like tongues of fire, and it settled upon them, and that was the Holy Ghost, and it is the only thing that can quell the oncoming storm. The prophet said, before one drop of bomb lands on this earth, we will be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And it is only the Holy Ghost, the Lord himself, that can take you there. My brother, my sister, there is an oncoming storm. The danger lies ahead. Don't get too comfortable with the things of the world. Don't forget your calling. Why you are here. Always remember, you are in the world. But not of the world. You are pilgrims and strangers in the land. You are seeking a city to come. You are not made with hands. But you are made by God Himself. The land where there will be no more sickness. The land where there will be no more sorrow. No more pain. No more death. For God shall wipe away the tears from our eyes. That is where we are seeking to go. And that is where your hope has to be. So we'll let us lay aside the sins that easily beset us. Don't be like them that laugh at the gospel. Or don't be like them that listen and don't take heed to it. Because surely. The day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the and night. We have become so comfortable now that we have forgotten who we are. My brother, my sister, this evening you have been called to remembrance that you are not of this earth. So know that your life is not determined by the things of this earth. You are of your father. This time, not the devil, but the Lord himself. Amen. There is an oncoming storm. Let's be on our feet. It's just like the man that the prophet spoke about. That there was a man in uh, Florida. That he had a chicken farm. And there was a Christian brother who was always listening to the radio. And he came to remind him that they announced that there was an oncoming storm. So put your chicken in my car. Bring your family. Let's go and hide in my house. This man said, no. I don't listen to any of your nonsense. I don't live by that. The man said, then let your children and your wife come and be with me. He said, no. 
to the I am the boss. What I say is what my house will So he did not listen. And the brother left. The prophet said immediately. The storm came. And it killed him. And he didn't end there. Because they were living by the lake. He created a tsunami. And the lake went to their house. Now because their house was flooded. They, they decided to climb on the rooftop. Their wife and their children climb on the rooftop. But because they were in a marshy area, the snakes were also running for their life. So the snake climbed on the rooftop and went to meet them there. You see that the snake is saved. Or the woman and the children are saved. Yeah, Unfortunately, the snakes had numbered the woman and the children. And, and by the time the storm has subsided, Amen. they came to see them lying on the roof dead. Why did that happen? Is it that they didn't see the storm coming? Is it that they were not warned? They were warned, but they refused to listen. So this evening, as the one is going forth, let's not be like the rest of the world. Let's listen to the voice of the sign. Because there are so much signs around us. Israel, we know they are at war. We know what is happening in the Middle East. We know the signs that are happening in the start. We know the economic power is what is happening. We know the sicknesses and diseases that is coming. We know about homosexuality. We know how sin has got into the being. These are all handwriting on the wall. These are all signs of the end times. Don't get relaxed now. Sing with me the day of redemption is now. Men's heart are feeling for fear. Be filled with the Spirit, your lungs clean and clear. Look up. Prophets are lying, God's truth they are denying. The signs that the prophet foretold to this generation spans God's revelation. Who walk where the apostles have gone? The day of redemption is now. Men's hearts are feeling for fear. Be filled with the Spirit. In the newspapers and of the oncoming storm. When we go home this evening, let's take the time to read Revelation 8. You see the oncoming plagues and the storm does to hit the earth. The thunders and lightning are going to shake the heaven. Man will rot in their flesh. Diseases will strike them. And the doctors will not know anything about it. But remember, before that took place, that there was a ceiling going forth. 
the ceiling is going on this very moment. And the deaf angel and the plagues were commissioned by God. Dark Come not near these ones that I have sealed. Touch not my anointed. Touch not the oil and the wine. Those who have the seal on their forehead. God has given them the instruction. Don't touch them. And know that the seal is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So why don't you say, Lord Jesus, this evening, even as the ceiling is going on, Lord, remember me. I don't want to be a nominal Christian. I don't want to be a normal church goer. I need to be sealed with the talking. So that when you see the blood, he will pass over you. Why don't you pray? Say, Lord, remember me this evening. Lord, have mercy upon me. The times are tough. The times are difficult. My Lord, have mercy upon me. And Lord, remember me for the oncoming song. It is scarier than we think. Would you allow a little lust, a little desire, a little need, a little want? Would you allow it to deprive you of eternity and live a hellish life in fire? Why not this Lord be merciful? Lord, this condition be merciful to me. Lord, take away this storm of evil from my life. Lord, this storm of uh, wickedness and iniquity, take it away. And Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. You have said in your word that I will have mercy upon who I will have mercy. So, Lord, remember me this evening. our timetable. We look at Gaza, we look at Lebanon, we look at Iran, we see Russia, we see America, we see Syria. These are all timetables. Handwritten instructions on the wall. We see the animals dying in droves, running away from their place of refuge. These are all signs of an oncoming storm. We see the signs that the prophet foretold coming to pass. We see Luke 17, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 be fulfilled in this day. We are living in very perilous times. We are living in very scary times. This is not a time to wait and hold on to the world. This is not the time to lax around. This is not the time to continue in our wedding life. This is the time to hold on for our dear life. This is the time to call out the Savior and say, Lord, save me, least I perish. Cry to the Lord for salvation this evening. Material things are good. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Seek ye first the salvation of your soul. 
Fear not the one that can kill the flesh and not touch the soul. Fear the one that can kill the flesh and the soul. And that man is the Lord Jesus Christ alone. He's the only one who can bring the soul back to life. He's the only one who can call it and it will end. Why not you call upon him this evening? And say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need your saving power in our lives. Amen. 
when the scripture says that there is coming perilous times. There is coming a day that has never been before where men's heart will fail for fear. Where men will call for death and death will run for its life. Where men will say the mantis should fall upon them. Where even the sea will give up the dead. The God who dwells in the midst of the wild wind and the clouds are like dust on his feet the God who the blast of his nostrils divides the sea into two the God who walks through fire and is not consumed the Lord that death and grave could not hold him down. This same God one day it will not be said of him that he's a loving God. It will not be said of him that he's the, uh, the, uh, the, lamb, the, the lamb that was slain for the remission of our sins. It will be said of him that he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He will be the God that you stand in his face and you cannot open your mouth to even defend yourself. Now, as he's softly and tenderly calling upon you to come unto him, pleading, telling you there is an oncoming storm, that I am the only place of refuge. Why don't you surrender your life unto him? Why don't you say, Lord, I don't want to be partakers of this. Scripture says that I've said this day before you life and death. But I adjure you to choose life. This day, why don't you choose the Lord? Why don't you choose him when he is still a son? When he is still a lamp, why don't you choose him? As the Lord prayer goes forth, will you say, Lord, remember me? Lord, remember me in my weakness. Lord, remember me in my sinful estate. Amen. Radio <laughs> 
Rad ye was a maudia maumba. Yen in shrine and umba edi kofi. Is there radi wouldn't jaw yen? Yet ye want to so oh was a ma abayen swing. Kurayen. Na buyen. Na buyen obayen. Na ki kien. E kwa nyoma pemun kwa. Na nyoma ye bon idea. Wen yi ni na re efi ya kwem. Na ama ye wwatse. Na ya kase ye Christofwa. A damn name pompriani e kabia eni ye won. Yet ya kudro abba ufie. I can was some panel at Rama Mayna. A fellow Betty and Hundi Radia and no Yashe. Yashe and Crabbotter and our boy in a Viano. Then he said, Rado de Bemayan. Way by in Shadia and a dance tear, the Yenabe Shim was Roa. They are Kadia, your family in Aram, and Uncunim Dia or the Mayan. Then he saw by Yamayan. Yet your soft penny shall want sa. I saw me in Asha want sa. I saw him a soft one jury and in the main Asha want sa. A soft wow, woof ye in Asha won't sap. Radiant Paul Crow, not poor won, not poor on Muslim, Natana dying Nara, where to number one who find, and while in summer air, dead, nay, I wish you wouldn't say, after one swam by him. Yet you deserve to be our baby and them, said there was some arcano. Yet I was saying, so what's the end why am I? Ye free hay and free one as you are it. Yet that's what shall call him to buy Nassi, that cry and a very good do a fear as from Jimu, and that who for your son be shame or harm. And each and you say, Bo, and I want dinner. I am quite to go on sign womb. I be sure we didn't go on offer that I was Oh, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. God bless you all. I'm Israel 107. In the city where the lamb is alive. Amen. Amen. 
Bless you. The city where the coming do not. I have a bunch of. 